probably say the up because for some reason Volkswagen have decided to put an exclamation mark after its name. But that aside, the big question is, is this car worthy of the GTI badge? Well, we're going to find out. This being a GTI, it makes sense to start with performance. So the engine, although it's only a one litre three cylinder unit, it's been turbocharged. So that means we get 113 horsepower. Now that doesn't sound like a lot considering the old Lupo GTI had 10 more than that, and that was 20 years ago. And although the Lupo had a much bigger engine at 1.6 litres, it had to make do with a piddly 112 foot-pounds of torque, whereas this has 147, and that makes a difference. 0 to 60 takes a mildly potent 8.8 seconds, and it'll go on to a top speed of 122 miles an hour. And before you say it, I know that's not quite as quick as what the old Lupo used to be, but the torque is available from 2000 RPM. That's much lower than you could get in the Lupo. So it doesn't matter what gear you're in, it just pulls and pulls and pulls. this car makes some deep and bellowing noises as it climbs through the rev range. This is because it's fitted with a sound actuator. It's actually the same system that's on the bigger, more expensive Golf R. The best way I can describe it is like auto-tune, but for cars. Let me explain. Basically, it picks up the best noises that the tiny little one-litre engine makes and then amplifies them. So it's sort of fake, but it's no different to what BMW have been doing on their M cars for years now. And I sort of quite like it as well, it's a bit Porsche-esque. Sounds a bit like a flat six. But let's just say it definitely enhances the driving experience. Right, so let's move on to what this car feels like to drive. VW have lowered the GTI 15mm over the standard car and they've also fiddled around with the damping and some other suspension components. The result is this car is much, much sharper to drive and it deals considerably better with undulations and crests, dips, bumps, whatever in the road. It's actually surprisingly competent for a car with its dimensions, but they've managed to do all that without ruining the ride. So it means you can daily drive the GTI if you wanted to, and in fact, I do. The steering, while not full of feel, definitely provides a nice amount of feedback. It weights up nicely into the corners, and I think it gives you a lot of confidence behind the wheel. I really love the fact that they've borrowed this steering wheel straight from the Golf GTI. You get the flat bottom and it really helps to upsell the perceived quality in this cabin. And while we're talking about upgrades for this model, let's have a look at them in greater detail. So let's start at the front then. So first of all you've got the uh, bigger cooling vents hidden along the bottom down here to get more air in to cool the engine down. You've got the ever fashionable now honeycomb inspired grill design. You've got front fog lights here and here which you don't get on lower models. And then you've got your first GTI badge, there's plenty more of them to come, and the now infamous red line that's used on the other GTI models in the range. Moving down the side of the car then, at the front you've got these lovely 17 inch diamond cut alloy wheels behind which we find some red brake calipers, very sporty. Um, up on the front fender you've got our second GTI badge and then moving down along the side you've got this nice black decal which helps it stand out more from the lower models. 
It's also got black painted mirror caps and it's worth pointing out that mine has a black roof but that is an optional extra. So at the back then we've got the uh, obligatory hot hatch spoiler, we've got the red line but this time along on the boot lid and we've got a nice chromed exhaust down there. Oh and of course our third GTI badge just in case you weren't absolutely certain what this car was. Moving on the inside of the GTI and you'll be greeted by this weird cube red design and um, the steering wheel I've already mentioned and of course the traditional tartan seats that you always find in other GTI models. In the centre console you have all the things that you would expect to have in your car nowadays such as air conditioning, this one's got the upgraded climate control, heated seats, DAB digital radio. This bizarre looking thing is designed to hold your phone in it. What you need to do first is download a Volkswagen app and once it's in there it can connect to the car, it can display your navigation, uh, your media, all sort of relevant information to the car. The genius of this I believe is that media systems nowadays go out of date very quickly so by using your phone as the media system as long as you're updating it on a semi-regular basis then it's always going to be a better faster operating system than anything Volkswagen could come up with themselves and because it's fully adjustable as you can see you can use any kind of phone in it I think this is a really good idea and before I forget, the steering wheel has our fourth GTI badge on it and the gear knob has our fifth and hopefully final GTI badge on it. Anyway, oh bugger, there's another one. My favourite feature of the interior though are these seats which is best explained from this angle. You see, they operate on a ratchet rather than a dial that we're more used to so I can just recline and then sort of left with a, a bed which you could pretty much sleep in it's, it's really rather great so how much does one of these cost then well since i purchased mine the price has actually been slightly increased a couple of years ago when i got this prices started from just under fourteen thousand pounds but now they've been increased to just under sixteen thousand pounds the reason for the jump is because VW have introduced a new model into the lineup, the R Line, and that now occupies the £14,000-ish area of the market. And while that means it's still relatively inexpensive, it's not quite the bargain it once was. It is cheap to run though, mine does 50 miles to the gallon in normal-ish daily driving, and because it's got that one litre engine, the insurance isn't that much either. So then, I must now ask the big question, is this worthy of the GTI badge? Well I'm happy to report that I think it is. If you're in the market for a small, frugal, relatively inexpensive car that's still fun to drive, then I can think of no better alternative than this, the Volkswagen Up GTI. Stop, 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 stop,